I was recently watching the anime series Attack on Titan, and one of the characters, the Colossal Titan, is known for its massive size and destructive power. And sitting there, I couldn't help but be reminded of the current super welterweight contender, Sebastian Vandura, an absolute freak for the weight division he is in, who possesses a formidable presence due to his 6 foot 6 height and the damage he wishes to do on his opponent. From first impressions looking at him outside the boxing ring, you can't help but think he looks like some skinny high school kid, he even looks fragile at first glance. However, by the time you see this guy in the squared circle, you start to truly understand why he is called the Towering Inferno. And letting it fly, another hard shot. Cole takes a closer look. Ahmed's gotta move his head. Cole is in and it's over, that's it. Who's had the advantage, Joe, over the first two? And now Lubin with the shot of his... A left hook landed for Lubin. Oh my goodness, and down goes Lubin. Fundora is feeling it. Lubin is stunned. The American Southpaw of Cuban and Mexican descent has yet to taste defeat, having conquered some of the other top contenders in the division, and is really now pushing for a title shot. For someone so tall for his weight vision, it's no wonder so many opponents have struggled against him. But it's not just because he has an incredible height and reach advantage, but it's also his ability to dogfight on the inside. In this breakdown analysis video today, I'm going to take a closer look at Fandora's boxing style and why he's been such a problem in his career today. So on that note, let's get right into it. First up, let's have a quick look at his background and amateur career. When you first look at Sebastian Vandura's skyscraper stature, you probably mistake him for being a basketball player. The Florida native first actually started boxing at the age of 8, and from that young age, Sebastian was always in good hands with his Cuban-born father and trainer being a former boxer himself. Sebastian was just like any kid when he first started boxing. He wasn't even the tallest at first. However, it wasn't until he hit his mid-teens, he saw the massive growth spurt that started to see him tower over his opponents. Fundura as well is not the only one that has excelled in pugilism, as his older brother Alberto was also a pro boxer, and his younger sister Gabriela is also a professional boxer. He said, My father was a boxer, my mother boxed, I started at my dad's gym, which was a converted office building, and loved boxing from the moment I tried. Everyone in my family has boxed and I believe my sister's going to turn professional soon. I had over a hundred amateur fights, but I never really won anything significant. The family later would move to Coachella, California, and after that growth spurt, he did try his hand at basketball and other sports. I'm sure though that there was recruits and scouts trying to get you to play these other sports, right? Like ever since you did your growth spurt. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, they tried in, in high school I remember Football, I mean, I, I don't know why they want me in football. Football, basketball, track, every every sport I can remember, they would want me on the team, but uh, just stuck with boxing the whole time, and it, it's obviously playing off now, so. This family totally lives and breathes boxing, as they all train together and even have a boxing ring in the backyard. Sebastian then garnered attention in the audience when he was 19 in one of his fights, and was recognized by his mentor and manager, Samson Levkovich who has also helped the likes of David Benavidez reach the top of boxing. After testing him in a bout versus Victor Tony in 2017, Samson decided to coach Fandura and take him to Uruguay and then fight some more experienced fighters in Argentina. And this experience proved crucial in his development and Samson has said the following about him. I believe Fandura will get the hearts of the Americans, Mexicans and the Latinos and he'll be a superstar because he deserves to be. Why? Because he has Mexican blood, and Mexican blood is coming to fight. He has big pantalones. Actually, it's not big pantalones, it's long pantalones. But now, let's take a deeper look at how the towering Inferno fights in the ring. As you will have seen so far, Sebastian Fandura is tall, and with a significant reach advantage over everyone, Fandura is built for an outboxer, 
but in his heart, he very much prefers to fight in a more pressure fighter swarmer style instead. Many of his opponents find this out the hard way once they get in the ring with him, thinking they'll be able to take him out on the inside. However, Fundura can be just as comfortable on the inside and is very capable of creating advantageous angles to land hooks and the left uppercut from close range. Another advantage has helped him to date is his southpaw stance, which has no doubt added another dimension to his attack, making it very difficult to outjab him, especially for orthodox fighters, while his left hand has proven to be deadly at times. So far, Fundura has proved this pressure swarmer style has worked for him due to him being a busy puncher and respectable power to keep opponents off him, making perfect use of the leverage of his long frame and limbs. However, as much as Fundura prefers to be more of an inferno, he does have the ability to be an outboxer at times when the situation warrants it, especially against more experienced fighters on his resume. Standing at 6 foot 5.5 inches, his stature might be something normal for a heavyweight, but he is of course fighting at light middleweight, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him move up the weight divisions over the next few years. In terms of comparison, here's a look at him compared to some other heavyweights. And as you can see, he is tall, but to give you a greater idea of the size over his opponents, you just need to watch any of his weigh-ins, but you can really start to see the size disparity when you see other champions in and around his weight division that he could potentially fight, such as Charlo, Spence, Terence Crawford or Golovkin. And going by the evidence to date, I think no matter who faces him, is going to have a hard time dealing with the height and the 80 inch reach advantage. <laughs> reach out to me, holy shit. Look, look how like, I, I wouldn't even be able to hit him in a fight. Like, that's all you gotta do, bro. You, you got like 90% of it, like, figured out right there naturally yep yep now i've noticed when some fighters have taken him to deep waters and he starts to tire he has looked to box in the back foot utilizing more of his physical advantages however as much as this is an advantage the issue is opponents can't box him from long range they have no choice but to go mid distance or inside to land the punch which has forced Vondura to fight on the inside When we think of inside fighters, the first that might come to mind is Roberto Duran, Julio Cesar Chavez, or Henry Armstrong. Big guys don't usually get associated with fighting this way. However, we have seen some appear over the years, including Diego Corrales, Riddick Bowe, and Paul Williams, who I actually see the most similarities with Fondura's style due to their southpaw stances. But what are some of the things Fundura likes to do on the inside? Well, you'll probably notice Fundura using a lot of framing with his right hand and forearm on the inside before in a left straight, hook or uppercut. While framing with his right also helps to block the opponent's vision and makes them try to move their head, thus leading to openings. Well, sometimes you'll even pull the head down of his opponent into his left uppercut. He'll also even frame off of his shoulder by pushing forward and of balancing the opponent to create further opportunities to attack. Well, if the opponent rushes in, he'll try to control the opponent's arm by smothering or underhooking one of his arms to look to battle it out, as he usually looks to set up the left uppercut or go to the body with them. Some other subtle inside work is just some basic wrestling where he'll look to underhook his arms and then turn them around in the ropes to get a better position. While he'll also look to change his head position from shoulder to shoulder to protect himself from hooks. But overall he likes to throw those wide looping hooks and uppercuts on the inside. And although sometimes he gets countered throwing these, it can be very difficult to defend against. Now, as much as Fundura does like to fight on the inside, he is just as capable from fighting at a mid to long distance, utilizing that 80 inch reach. From watching him, you'll see a lot of punches come off that lead hand, such as a simple jab cross, 
or if an opponent's trying to rush him, a jab left uppercut. But he will mainly look to counter anyone reckless with the lead left uppercut or straight rushing in. I've also noticed due to his reach, he has a tendency of throwing the left hand as a wide looping hook around the opponent's guard, which often connects, while sometimes he mixes up the left uppercut by throwing it from a spear-like position to get through the guard or even narrow it so he can create further openings. For me though, Fandura is best when putting his combinations together and letting his hands go. And he isn't just throwing aimlessly. Sometimes you'll try to change his foot positioning to get a better angle or to get away from a counter. You will often see him use the leverage of each punch to his advantage to help him generate the power, in particular the uppercut hook or vice versa, while also sometimes changing the location from head to body. When applying pressure, he'll sometimes catch competitors off guard by using a sneaky shift forward into an orthodox position to set up punches from a different angle or just to continue his march forward. Defensively, when he's been facing orthodox fighters at times, they've struggled to get past his lead hand. With his skinny frame, you'd also think guys would try to target the body, but Fundura actually makes it quite difficult for opponents to date to hit him cleanly due to the positioning of his arms being slightly lower. So, to get away from punches, he'll use his height to his advantage by rolling with the lead shoulder, using linear backwards footwork, or pivoting out to his right to get away from danger, while sometimes even using a check right hook to make his opponent second guess them rushing in. Now so far today we've seen some flaws in Fundura and as much as he does have some incredible advantages, all too often you will see him get hit cleanly with things like overhand rights and lead left hooks. As I just mentioned before on his defensive side, he does actually a good job in terms of protecting his body due to the lower arm positioning and shoulder roll. However, it does leave him getting caught out by these counter punches at times. Sebastian clearly feels he can rely on rolling with the lead shoulder using linear footwork or even smothering his opponent. But as we have seen, sometimes this just isn't enough to stop a barrage of wide looping punches, especially when you're hurt. And as much as a high guard shell can get criticism for being an easy target, I feel he might need to learn to shell up in those moments. Sometimes as well, he will get lazy with the jab or just mistime it, getting caught out too with those left counter hooks. Another area I feel he can improve is just his footwork. He obviously is an aggressive come forward fighter, but he can be quite flat footed at times as he likes to sit down on his punches. But he's showing glimpses of being able to box on the outside and I just feel this might be an approach he needs to consider as he moves up in weight or faces bigger punches. Remember Paul Williams who I compared him to earlier? I feel if he doesn't improve some of these defensive qualities, he could suffer a similar fate. Nevertheless, at the same time, we need to give him the benefit of the doubt as a lot of opponents so far have to rush him as they have no choice but to fight that way due to the reach. Personally, I think once the opposition steps up or he faces bigger punchers, he's going to have to look to try and keep them at the end of his punches by staying on the outside at times. And he has certainly proven he can counter punch using that left straight or uppercut. Finally, you could also make the argument he just likes fighting on the inside too much. And this could potentially be his downfall in the future but personally, aside from maybe the Lubin fight, he has gotten a lot better. But all things considering, he is an inferno. And sometimes fighting fire with fire is the only way to go. Final thoughts. Overall, I think Fandora still has much potential to continue improving his skill set over the next few years. And is definitely knocking at the door to become a world champion. For me, it doesn't matter who he faces. He's going to give you a hard and awkward fight. He's a southpaw, he's got an 80 inch reach, he can counter you, fight on the inside, and even knock you out. He's the towering inferno after all. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Sebastian Fandura. Do you think he can dominate in the years to come? And do you think he can beat some of the other top guys from 154 to 160 pounds? I'd love to know. Why not check out my video on some other potential world champions here? This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Thank you so much for watching, and... I'll see you in the next one.